Today, I'm going over one of the most crazy moves in NBA 2K20, a crazy spin shot popularized by the legend himself, Ticino. And today, I'm going to be teaching you exactly how to do that move, where it's most effective, and how to use it to your full advantage. Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Story of Sam, back with another NBA 2K20 video. And as you know, I'm going over one of Ticino's most popular shots and exactly how he does it and how effective it truly is. If you're brand new to my channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. We are on the road to 2,000 subscribers and every single subscriber counts. Don't forget to drop a like in the video. It helps a ton. Let's try to aim for 25 likes. Before we get started, I just want to say shout out to everyone who's been coming through in my live streams. I live stream a couple of times a week. I'm going to be trying to live stream a lot more right here on YouTube so you can stay tuned for those. Make sure to put on those post notifications so you'll get notified whenever I go live. I don't have a set streaming schedule just make sure to stay tuned for those and as i said put those post notes on okay guys so i now aim in the my court i'm going to show you guys what the move looks like and then exactly how to do it and why it is super super good here's the shot crazy spin move you can get a lot of separation and you see that green the shot right there that move creates so much space and the defense isn't going to be anywhere even close to you i can guarantee you that now the move might look very complicated upon first seeing it but trust me guys it is not hard to do the only hard part is greening the jump shot. A quick disclaimer, you cannot use square to shoot the ball. You have to use the right stick because you do the move with the right stick. That's the one downside of the move. You cannot use square to time it, so timing it can be a little bit hard. But without further ado, guys, I'm going to teach you guys exactly how to do that move as well and the jump shot one. So you can use it for two different scenarios, and they're both very, very effective. So first, I'm going to teach you guys how to do the move when you're dribbling to the left side of the court. So when you're dribbling to the left side of the court, you want to take your right stick and take it from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock clockwise. So basically move it from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock in a clockwise motion, and make sure you continue to hold the right stick down when you do get to 6 o'clock. So it should look like this, going left 12 to 6, hold it down at 6, and right there, I got the layup. So basically, I got the layup because I was running too close to the basket. So if you want to get the layup, make sure to angle yourselves inward. And as I said, guys, when you're going to the left side, 12 to 6 on the right stick clockwise. So dribble to the left, go inward, boom, easy layup right there. You can get past any defense like this. It is very, very unpredictable, and rarely anybody does this except Ticino, obviously. And if you want to get the crazy jump shot, same thing, left side, 12 to 6, hold it down on 6, and move backwards a little bit so it's like a little bit less angled towards the rim so you're like running outside to the three-point line more and just do the same movement holding r2 as well when you're doing the move helps it a lot as i said guys the hard part is to green this move it is a hard jump shot to green that's why i recommend you guys go to the my court practice this shot practice the green window because you can't use square as i said you got to go 12 to 6 on the right stick in a clockwise motion to do the shot left but now i'm going to teach you guys how to do the move going to the right side now it's basically the same thing but now you're going to want to move the right stick 12 to 6 counterclockwise and again hold it down at 6 while holding turbo so run to the right 12 to 6 counterclockwise I get to spin shot right there. Now, I do recommend, as you guys saw in that shot, how the player's, like, ball hand, like, shooting the ball was a little bit awkward. So, basically, if you are a right-handed player, do the shot to the left side. And if you are a left-handed player, do the shot to the right side. It just makes the shot a lot more, like, complicated when you are doing the move to the side that you shoot with. It just makes the hand really weird, and it is more hard to get off three-point shots. So, I'll do it again on the right side. My guy's a righty. 12 to 6. It just pulls my guy in a lot more. I want to shoot you three pointers when doing this. And when going to the left, it helps a ton. As I said, guys, when doing it to the right, hold turbo, hold the right stick 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock, this time counterclockwise. And again, hold the right stick down when you do hit 6 o'clock. It should look just like this. It's going to be a little bit awkward, again, because I'm a right handed player. And as I said, guys, you can do the same thing doing a layup on the right side, the same thing, just angle yourself more towards the basket, and you'll get a spin layup right there. If you do this move in a park game, I guarantee you no one's going to expect it. And like 9 out of 10 times, you're going to be wide open for a jump shot because no one in the game expects this move whatsoever. It is very, very effective and just no one sees it coming at all. As I talked about, it is the hardest part to green the shot. As you can see, I'm kind of struggling to green the shot. But when you do practice it in my court a lot, it becomes a lot easier. You just got to find the green window for the shot. But yeah, I got the green right there. So you just got to practice it. It is a very hard move to master. But when you do, you're going to get free buckets almost every single time. And also, I'm not sure if your player can do a dunk when you're going for like the more inward spin move, like trying to go for the layup. I'm not sure if players can dunk it. My guy, personally, my three level score cannot dunk the ball, so I can't really test this out. But when doing a layup like here, I'm not sure if your guy can dunk the ball. I'm sure he can if your guy can dunk, but I made my guy in the beginning of the year and I have like a 26 driving dunk. It's a really bad build, but I made it in the beginning of the year and I didn't know better, and that's why my build cannot dunk. So unfortunately, I can't get like the dunk animations off the spin move, but I can still shoot the fadeaway shots very, very well. Anyways, guys, if you did enjoy, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. We are on the road. 
to 2,000 subscribers. The support has been going crazy recently. As I said, guys, I'm going to be streaming a couple times a week here on YouTube. I'm going to try to stream more in the future, but for now, it's just a couple streams per week. And I'm modding a lot of you guys. I'm having a lot of fun doing these live streams, so make sure to come out, turn on those post notifications, and don't miss a stream. And as always, don't forget to drop a like in the video. Same for 25 likes on today's Ticino spin shot, jump shot, whatever you want to call it, tutorial. This move is very effective if you can get the green window down. That's really the hardest part of the jump shot, greening it every single time because it can be tricky to green, especially when you're not holding the square button. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Hit that sub button, drop a like. Stay tuned for streams. And if you want to watch more of my 2K content, I'm going to leave an end screen right when this video finishes to two of my previous 2K20 videos. You can check those out right when this one is finished. Have a great rest of your day, guys. It's been Story of Sam, and I'm out. Peace.